Back here. He Hello everyone, I'm Hugh Hayden. Uh, I'm this artist, I'm a sculptor primarily. I'm trained as an architect and I'm originally from Texas. Um, I sh where to start? So this show, it, for me, it's obviously in Hollywood, it's in Los Angeles. And it's my first show here on the West Coast. And so, uh, you know, I just turned 40 on Sunday, so there's a level of, I grew up in the 80s and 90s. And, like, world pre-internet and Instagram, so I had certain perceptions of like LA and so um, and how that would intersect with my work that kind of explores the American dream and the difficulty in, of inhabiting that space and the, the ways people find to, to live within that. Um, it's somewhat a product of this show and so that there are familiar materials and work and mediums uh, like you know I use vernacular American wooden furniture types um, that have different significances, whether a school desk, an Adirondack chair, um, or now a director's chair, to sort of look at the sort of associated and known meanings of those, but how can I infuse them with a, a more, uh, like a new way of looking? So this piece called The Audition was sort of one of the first works I conceived of. And also, like, I encourage you all to come and, and look at the pieces up close. Um, was one of the first pieces I could I wanted to show here in Los Angeles. I actually even before the gallery opened, I was like, I want to make this for Freeze LA. Um, I didn't have the time at the, at the I didn't have enough time when I first conceived of it. But I always knew that I wanted to sort of approach these sort of issues of this idea of the, the director's chair, what it represents, um, sort of whether it's in a Me Too movement. Myself as a you know, black male, I've, I've worked as an architect for 10 years in a corporate situation, sort of the thinking of who typically was my boss in those situations. Um, I think there's many ways to, to look at the piece as this sort of um, place that, uh, you know, the space you might want to desire, but also the thing that, that's there that's supposed to help you that might be difficult to use. But also through using wood, um, where essentially in this piece, the penises have been sculpted from where there are branches in the wood. And so, while my, like, while my pieces have a concept behind them, I'm, I'm also really interested in exploring the material possibilities uh, of wood uh, and what, what can be done with it. Like, this chair could have been made a thousand years ago. There was canvas and there was, you know, tree branches. It's sort of, there's nothing truly high-tech about it, but it's just sort of taking the time to explore the material possibilities um, of a piece of wood. And I guess, to some degree, as an artist using wood, I, I am interested and the idea of taking a piece of wood, which is something that most people have, have some relationship to, whether it's a, piece, a tree or a piece of wood, their whole life, but if I can sort of change their perspective of that sort of ubiquitous material, that's a way in to change maybe how they think about something more conceptual and deeper um, that that artwork is represented. I should also talk about historically the context of the space. The previous tenant was uh, like a, what I've told is sort of a gay, uh, sex club bathhouse called the Zone was the previous tenant, and sort of also I wanted to scratch the surface on that and that um, and this exploration of masculinity in Hollywood. Um, they also like think about the sort of sexuality that inhabited the space, and also um, that you don't have to know that to look to look experience the show, but also in creating the bathrooms. Um, when I actually visited the space before the gallery took took it on, there were still a couple stalls here. These are these there were in different configurations. But that did lend itself to having a plumbing, excuse me, a wall of plumbed fixtures for the show. Um, in terms of the overall zoning of the show, you could say there is more bathroom s works on this plumbing wall. Um, when you in this area, there are more wooden works um, that ex explore. Um, I guess the whole show explores the prosthetics of power and somewhat like thinking about masculinity as well as Hollywood, sort of using different like tropes of, uh, to sort of explore ways people uh, uh, control or obtain power, whether it's a gun, uh, uh, the representation of a penis, a piece of architecture, um, or even a neuron. Um, so, how to start? So, so essentially there's the plumbing works, there are some furniture works, there are some pieces that explore both maternity and, and fatherhood, or motherhood and fatherhood, uh, pieces that are examining love, um, also self care and sort of protection and prep, as well as guns, 
and architecture. So um, I'm only going to speak about a few of the works, or I'll prop some of the doors. I really encourage you sort of to look in each, sort of like, you know, as a bathroom show, there are mostly urinals, which you will see, but there's also toilets. This piece is called Probiotics. <laughs> it's sort of, I started taking probiotics about a year ago when I got COVID. Um, but also thinking of this sort of kumbaya with nature and sort of this, like a toilet as this equalizing device. But also thinking of like sort of a hookup space of like whether it's like the meat rack or a place in the woods where people might congregate around bathrooms as this sort of hookup space. Sort of, a, for me, it can be all those things all at once. Um, um, as well as a lot of my works sort of, I'm mean, I mean, These are two um, Tiffany engagement rings that I have replaced the diamonds with the Scovey tools. Uh, they're engraved with the Scovey, which is this uh, anti-HIV sort of prep medication, um, which for many people in my generation that's created this uh, new idea of like romance within a gay world, I, I would say, of like a... I mean, there's some irony around that if you were taking prep, you would in a long-term relationship, you might not need prep, but... Um, they're engraved with happily ever after and sort of busy with rain, and the piece is called Fairy Tale. Um, and so it's uh, um, sort of, a, in a way, it's sort of, if there are like different influences in the show, that's sort of, sort of, um, my Felix Gonzalez Dolly Torres sort of moment. Um, another work is called Labrad uh, Buffalo Doodle. I, I'm a dog owner, um, I have a almost five year old dog which you'll see, but uh, this piece is called the Buffalo Doodle, and it's sort of a play on the ubiquity of doodles types of dogs, like dogs that have been crossed with a poodle, which, and from my impression, have become the most um, ubiquitous dog in the United States, um, because essentially there are these new crossbreeds um, that sort of, the whole impetus of it is that they're uh, wooden shed, so they're better for people who have allergies. But by crossing the poodle with the buffalo, it becomes this sort of new hybrid thing, this idea of like this hybridization of America your way, sort of this sort of designer dogs, this sort of designer in America that, you know, whether you're ordering like Grubhub or Caviar, you know, or the personalizing the, your new car or your Tesla, sort of, you know, everything you can have it your way, sort of. For me, this is this sort of, it might be an English or not the show, but it's still this sort of, to be thinking about this sort of zeitgeist right now of being able to remix 